Hi everybody, it's Rita Smith, the number one food fairy. Um, I'm here today to introduce myself, Blogvertise, um, which is by far the most professional internet uh, group that I've worked with in the last two years, which I'm really grateful for, um, asked me to uh, film a short introduction, introducing those of you who would be reading my blogs or viewing my videos on my website um, to me and who I am. So. Um, one of the first things that probably you'll notice um, on my cooking videos for sure is that I introduced myself as the number one food fairy. What does that mean? Well, it's not like I had to compete for the title or anything. I'll explain to you what it means. About 20 years ago, uh, some siblings, uh, I have nine, I have nine brothers and sisters, uh, some siblings and in-laws and I were seated at my brother's dining room table um, playing and making a meal plan for our summer vacation that year. There are 16 of us and we were going to be together for 14 days. So 16 people, including little kids, like two, three, four years old, 16 people um, together for 14 days, uh, three meals a day plus snacks. That's a lot of food. We only, we were in a small Northern Ontario cabin. We had one small refrigerator and no freezer. So, um, Meal planning was like a bit of a, it was pretty tricky, you know. We were working hard at it. Um, one person volunteered to make lasagna and freeze it. Another volunteered to make chili. Another volunteered to scout for beef tenderloins on sale so that we could barbecue them. And um, so while we were in the middle of working on the food plan for 16 people for 14 days, my brother Paul, who does not cook and who um, does not plan for food, walked into the dining room and looked at all of us with our notepads and he said, you people are obsessed with food. You're obsessed with food. You know, who plans in March what you're going to be eating on Wednesday in July? And my brother Pete, who is a food fairy and who does plan for food, said, you know, that's because when you sit down at a table, um, you expect a plate of food, delicious food, spare ribs or steak and potatoes, you know, to just land in front of you because a food fairy is going to just, you know, waft down from the heavens and put the food in front of you. A food fairy will deliver the food so you don't have to think about it. But for those of us who actually think about it, we do the work ahead of time. So from that time on in our family, people were divided. And this is just a purely affectionate and humorous term. People were divided between food fairies and non-food fairies. Those of us who are food fairies, yes, we will sit at, you know, in March and we'll plan for meals in July because we figure we have to. Non-food fairies just have to show up and eat the food. So um, it works out. You can't, everybody can't be a food fairy. You can't have 30 people in the kitchen at one time. Everybody can't be a non-food fairy. You'll have two-year-old kids running around at 7 o'clock at night screaming because they're starving, right? So um, it's good that there's a balance. And then we did go out for a big restaurant meal, and Uncle Paul paid for the whole thing. I think it was like $600 or something. And when he pulled out his credit card, he said, I hope this makes me a food fairy. And we said, well, it doesn't make you a food fairy, but it does, you know, make you a contributor. So in our family, we have divided uh, people who worry about food are food fairies people who plan ahead, people who cook, and people who just show up to eat, they're non-food fairies, and that's fine, you know, you need enough of them too. Um, however, uh, there was no contentiousness about, you know, what makes a food fairy or what doesn't make a food fairy. The only thing that ever got contentious was this apron. My daughter, Johanna, who works in hockey, and uh, who has things embroidered, you know, wholesale all the time, uh, contacted a supplier and had these aprons made for me, number one food fairy so i was deemed the number one food fairy one christmas johanna presented me with this apron and i was deemed the number one food fairy um, i was not it was the no vote was taken the rest of my family did not necessarily agree that i'm the number one food fairy but i'm the one who has the apron so since i have the apron i get to call myself the number one food fairy unless somebody actually challenges me on the title and knocks me off my throne, I'm gonna call myself the number one food fairy, you know, until the end. Um, and I realized that no vote was taken and it was only because Johanna had these aprons printed that I get to call myself that, but how much fun is that? Like I get to call myself the number one food fairy. What I do wanna point out in the connection to um, my blogs and my cooking videos and my website 
is being a food fairy is more than just cooking. Um, over all the years, 30 years that I've been self-employed in business and I raised three amazing, amazing children um, who are brilliant and hardworking, um, uh, putting great food in front of family took way more than just cooking. I had to uh, find the customers, I had to sell the customers, I had to deliver on the job, I had to collect on the job, I had to cash the check, I had to go shopping and buy food, then I had to come home and cook, I got to come home and cook, um, and uh, then I got to put wonderful plates of food in front of people. So being a food fairy, in my mind, is so much more than just cooking. If all you had to do was cook and put it in front of people, it'd be relatively straightforward. Um, but in the real world, you have to earn the money, you have to collect the money, you have to go shopping, come home, cook the food, and then serve the food. So in my mind, the, a food fairy doesn't just cook the food and serve the food. A food fairy actually provides the food. Um, and that goes back many steps before the food is even purchased. Um, and I've been doing that for 30 years. Uh, if you look at my website, on my blogs especially, you'll see what I've learned in business. I've been privileged to work with some of the smartest, smartest um, business people and politicians in Canada over the last 30 years. I have been um, privileged to work in both the public and private sector. I love communications. Communications is my life. Um, I've been writing professionally since I was 23 years old. It was the first time I got paid to write, and I've never stopped. Um, so uh, when you look at my website, Rita Smith's Food for Thought, you'll see uh, my thoughts on cooking for sure in my videos. That's pretty straightforward. But you'll see my thoughts on business and what it takes to earn the money to be privileged to cook great meals in my blogs. And I hope between the two of them, um, you'll get great value. I hope you'll learn lots. I hope young people will learn lots. I hope new business people will learn lots. Um, I honestly uh, write uh, what I think is helpful and truthful and um, forward thinking, current thinking, how to change so that you can be better and do better and earn more money. That's in the blogs, and then you know what? If you do a good job earning money, you get to cook, and that's in the that's in the videos. So, Rita Smith, food for thought, number one food fairy here, telling you you can earn it, you can spend it, you can cook it. How much fun is that? Like it's it's the whole package. I hope you'll visit my website often, and I hope you enjoy it and learn something from it, and uh, provide me feedback. So sick of reality.